bias and variance, some concepts in model validation. Training error is high um, because you're using this line to um, model this function that we have here. And then the training error is low, zero, because this is overfitting. How about this one? Now we have our test set. So that's just for training data. So you use the same model, it's just linear model. And then you check um, the testing error is still high because uh, you're not using the appropriate model. The pink data points are the, the test, the gray are the train data points. For this one, the testing error is high because this is overfitting. You basically um, force your way to fitting the data points in the train set, but you're, you can't really generalize for the full um, data set when you now use your test set. So we call this a high bias data, a model, because uh, you have both um, high um, errors for train and test sets. You call it high variance when the uh, the train set error is low, but the test set error is high. I'll show more examples in a bit. So yes, if the train error is high, testing error is high, means it's a highly biased data and that's underfitting. If you have this, um, training error is low and then testing error is high, that means it's a high variance cost function. That's overfitting. This one is good model. Training error is low, not that perfect, but good enough. And then testing error is low. This is just okay. So that's bias and variance. Bias is the gap between the ideal and then um, your predictions. The ideal is the, the train set, sorry, yeah. This is, I have more examples of what bias and bias in a little bit, but let's show this first. There are lots of graphs for bias and variance. As you increase the model complexity, generally you get um, a lower bias because you're trying your best to fit your model to the train set that you have. So in most cases, you'll have lower bias. But um, what happens is uh, the variance also increases. That means um, you're having a higher test set error. So it's a balance really, trying to figure out um, which one is just enough for your particular data set. So what else? Um, another visualization of that. This one is low bias, low variance, the best case scenario. High variance, low bias, that's overfitting. See, it's high variance. Low bias is, um, it's a bit accurate, but you know, um, it's really just some of your hits are not that accurate, but some of them did hit it. For high bias and low variance, it's this. You're very consistent. It's really low variance, but um, you're really just, um, way off to your target. And then the worst case scenario, low bias, low variance. Sorry, high bias, high variance. It's really a bad model. Okay, more examples of bias and variance in the context of CAD classification. So training error. Let's just say, for example, um, wait, the human error is zero. That's our benchmark, the, the human error. Because in most cases, a human can identify if the picture is of a cat or a dog. So if you have a model and you train it and you got the following scores, the training error is 1%, the testing error is 11%, you say that it's high variance and low bias. Why is that? 
bias is computed by just simply subtracting the training error and the human error. Human error is the ideal one, best case scenario, but our model is, well, it's good enough. It's near the human error. So it's low bias. But um, high variance because the, there's a big gap between the training and test error. That's high variance. Okay, what about this one? <clears throat> what do you think? Again, the human error is zero. What uh, is this high bias, low bias, high bias, low variance, based on what I just said? Hello? Uh, high bias and what? Please I'll send it to everyone. Um, if you can. I mean the, the message, because I only see it. What do you think, guys? High bias, low bias, high variance, low variance. So it's high bias, low variance. Yes, it's high bias, low variance. That is underfitting. <clears throat> then how about this one? There's already color coding, <laughs> so this should be obvious. But what is this? This is what? Um, high bias, low bias, high bias, uh, high variance, low variance. High bias, high variance. It is high bias, high variance. <clears throat> it's just a bad model overall. <laughs> Worst case scenario. <laughs> This could be further optimized. <laughs> this is the case. I'm sure you could do something about it. How about this one? Put, uh, just right, um, low bias, low variance, ideal model. So yeah, that's how you determine if your model is overfitting, underfitting, or it's just okay. But the, uh, Question is, how do you identify this? The baseline, the human error. Well, you do RL, you do research, you do comparisons. So what is the typical error out there? If you can. Okay. Yeah, human level error is the proxy for base optimal error or the ideal error. The avoidable bias, the gap between the base error or the ideal error and the training set error. Just the avoidable bias. Yeah, it's the bias problem. Case two, um, low bias, but high variance. So that means um, you could still improve your model. That's usually the thing. You could, you could do something about this, um, the, this gap. The gap between the train and validation error. We'd normally do something about it. But uh, this one is trickier, the bias problem, because maybe it's uh, you don't have the right features in the model. There's so many possible causes for that. Maybe the model that you're using is just really not fit for that. Maybe you have to use another model entirely, like a more complicated model. That's how you usually address bias, avoidable bias. I mean, Maybe use neural networks. Maybe you're trying to use a linear regression for something that should be um, a neural network problem. So you're basically getting a high double bias because of that. But if your train and validation errors are high, then it uh, has to be something with um, maybe you're doing too much epochs, maybe you're really overfitting it, so maybe reduce the number of epochs or or apply regularization, those are things that you could do. Okay, satisfying optimizing metrics. So satisfying are the non-negotiable ones. Optimizing are, um, well, as long as, uh, well, your goal is to really just to optimize it. Depends um, on the problem. Sometimes you want it to be high or low. Or uh, in the context of, say, accuracy, of course, you want it to be as high as you can. Um, so some examples of satisfying metric, um, the non-negotiable ones, maybe you have um, a microcontroller. 
and um, your model should not exceed this um, memory size because you don't have much RAM in your microcontroller. So that's one limitation. You have to make it with what you have, just maybe like a 100 MB model capable of doing something, I don't know. Or maybe in, in, in um, object detection should be less than 100 milliseconds because anything higher than that, then that's you know, a very clunky system. It's, it will lag. It's not that usable in the context of object detection if it's really slow. If it's taking like a second per detection, 